God is good all the time. It's good to do something different every now and then. Hey, Sister Dina, praise God, Sister Michelle. It's good to do something different every time, amen? Every now and then, break out of the mundane. Brother Ryan, Sister Danae, hallelujah. Oh, I love you guys. We missed you all. Praise God. We have church on Wednesday evenings too, just so you all know. Tuesday evening, Tuesday evening, I'm recovered started. I'm just saying. I say that. How do, how, do we, how do us Christians say things? I say that in the most loving and encouraging way. Right? Do you ever have somebody say, you know, um, you know, I don't mean no disrespect, and then they disrespect you? Is it just me? Have you ever had somebody say, I don't mean no disrespect, but then, they, but then they just straight up disrespect you, right? Right? But I don't like your hair. It's like, oh, well, thank you for not disrespecting me. Right? Anyways, I got some announcements to make. Praise God. Say it with me, Winter Coat Drive. We're asking for your help to bring in clean, say it with me, clean winter coats. Um, we're, we have something uh, exciting that's taking place here really, really soon. And um, I just need your all help. Amen. Say it with me, help me, Jesus. Hallelujah. Next, children's ministry, we need teachers. Amen. We need teachers. Can I get an amen? If God puts it on your heart, listen, family, I'm going to ask you, don't, don't, don't wait. Just, just, just jump in and do it, right? Just jump in and do it. The reason why I'm saying that is because God has a blessing for you, and I just encourage you to, to, to just get involved. If we can all be a blessing and help teach the children, I promise you, you'll probably only have to do it once every four months. Maybe five months. But right now, you know, praise God, we have teachers, but they, there's a really tight rotation. So we need your help. Amen. Say with me, help me, Jesus. Next, um, see Trish if you want to be a teacher. Um, we need volunteer chaplains. Um, the director of the, of the hospital contacted me. We spoke yesterday. And um, if you feel led to be a volunteer chaplain, please uh, see Brother David. Brother David, um, He's going to get your information and everything. We'll make sure that you get the information to be a volunteer chaplain. Amen. Right now, who feels uh, led to be a volunteer chaplain? Brother David, look around right now. Brother David, this is on you, so you make sure you get these names, brother. You got these names. Sister Amanda behind you, too. All right. All right, so please see Brother David. Amen. So teachers, who are you going to see? Trish. Who here wants to be a teacher? Hey, Trish, look around. Do, do we have new people that, no, all right, if you're already a teacher, who, who, who's not signed up yet to be a teacher? Raise your hand. Praise God, we got Sister Shannon back there. Sister Cynthia, you're such a blessing because you also offered to watch the kids on Tuesday night, so thank you so much. I'm going to hold you to that. You can't tell me, well, I'm teaching the kids now. No, that's not the deal. I'm just playing with you. Um, next, every Tuesday evening, say it with me, Tuesdays. Listen, family, I, the reason why we're doing announcements right now, I can't help if you don't know what's going on in your church if you're not here. Can, uh, do you love me still? I mean, is it me going crazy? I don't like it when people go, well, no one told me. Well, you ain't been to church for a month. Right? Come back. Amen? But every Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock p.m., I am recovered. It's not Friday anymore. You don't know how many texts I got about, I thought I am recovered was going on. Yeah, but you're a few days late. Listen, I know you're sitting here, and I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make funny, but I'm just saying. We're trying to communicate everything. We're trying to, listen, as, as, as God is growing us, we need to make sure we put everything in order, right? So say it with me Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. And say it with me, you will be fed. Amen. Not only, not only spiritually, most importantly spiritually, but we do eat at 6 o'clock, and so we're excited about that. Say it with me, Emmaus Reunion. Praise. Sister Kristen's here. Praise God. How are you doing, beautiful? Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Do it with me. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Praise Jesus leaned into it. One more time. Jesus is Lord. Mm. I've done that this week, seeing a brother said. 
Emmaus reunion is every, say it with me, third Thursday. So the Emmaus reunion, we're kicking it off this month. It's going to start at 6 p.m. It's going to be here at your home, amen, home church, amen. So who's been on Emmaus? Woo, hallelujah. So guess what? It's not just for you that's been on Emmaus. I ran it by Elder Charlie. He said it's for everybody, amen. So we're excited about that taking place on the third Thursday. Special worship service. Say it with me. This is special. Praise God. Hey, beloved family, welcome Brother Adam and Sister Stacy. Hallelujah. Welcome home, family. Gosh, you guys are on far. There's a far. Say it with me. A special worship service. Let me mute the music real quick. When I say special, this is something special. Amen. This is deacon ordination. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. And it's for PJ and Ashley Franklin. Y'all stand up. Praise God. We love y'all. We thank God. Father God chose them. We did not. Father God chose them. And their, uh, their special service is going to be, say it with me, next Sunday, next Sunday. at 6 p.m. Amen. So please, please mark your calendars. Leaders, please, please mark your calendars. We'll, we'll, send, we'll, we'll put this up throughout the week. But once again, um, next Sunday at 6 p.m. Amen. Um, our worship service uh, this morning is titled Debt Collection, um, also called Past Due. Can you say that with me, Past Due? Past due. Actually, if you look on Facebook, it's going to be called Past Due. Um, at this time, I'm asking the praise and worship team to make their way up. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Amen. How many, how many of you are just ready to bless God with all that you have? Amen. He is good, amen, and God is head over heels in love with you, hallelujah. How many of you know that this morning, that we serve a God that is head over heels in love with you? It doesn't matter what you've done, did, it don't matter about, listen, hear me now, it don't matter about the sins in your life. God is bigger than the sins, can I get an amen? He's for you and he loves you. Man, I'm loving your hair, bro. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, let's all stand up on our feet. Praise God. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we just come to you on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning just to lift your name up, the name above every name, Father God. As we move into this worship service, we just we pray a special blessing over our praise and worship team, over our pastor. Most importantly, uh, we, uh, we just pray a special blessing over all the ears that are listening, Father God, that they are just open-hearted to receive you today. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you just come to this altar today. It is always open. Father God, we love you. We, we thank you for sending your, your son to die for us. Father God, we just, we just thank you for everything that you've done in our lives, Father. Next Sunday is going to be a special day for me, most importantly. I never thought I would be here, Father God, but the biggest butt in the Bible. Hallelujah. Father, we just, uh, we just lift you up, and we love you, and we praise you, and it's in your special holy name that we pray, and all God's people said, hey. amen. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to need your help this morning. If you are able, I need you all to jump. Can you all jump? Can anybody jump in here? If you can jump, I know I've got more people in here that can jump. If you don't jump and you're able, God will take it away from you to where you can't. No line in church, you all. All right, if you can jump, let's jump. Come on. Who can do it? All right, we are going to sing okay. Enemies Camp. When we sing He's Under My Feet, we are going to jump because we want Satan to know that he is under our feet this morning and that there is nothing that he can do to stop us or stop God. Enemies Camp. Joey's ready. Let's see if we can out jump Joey. Went to the enemy's camp and I, I took back what he stole from me and I took back what he stole from me and I took back what he stole from me. Went to the enemy's camp and I, I took back what he stole from me. He's under my feet, 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 he's under my feet. He's under my feet. Satan is under my feet. 
to the enemy's camp and I, I took back what he stole from me and I took back what he stole from me and I took back what he stole from me went to the enemy's camp and I, I took back My goodness, I I, I I'm, I'm like, oh. I think I'm out of shape. <laughs> hey, they, they jump up and down while singing at the same time. I can taste my pancreas right now. <laughs> oh, Lord, Jesus, help us. Amen. We're not done. I know we're not done, but my goodness, I need a, I need a break. Hold on, hold on a minute. I, that, that's why. I, <laughs> that, I, that, that's why I really interrupted, because I'm trying to catch my breath. Um. Let's give God, let's give God praise because today's going to be first time we're going to pass the offering plate. So uh, we're going to call all of our um, elders, deacons, whoever is uh, involved in taking up the offering. Listen, say it with me, new season. new season. We're in a new season right now and you could feel Father God harvesting souls for the kingdom. Amen. And say, say it with me, use me. Do you believe that? Do you believe God will use you to save souls from the pit of hell? I believe that in Jesus' name. And I ask you to find it in your heart to bless God with your best in giving. Beloved family, I'm going to tell you right now, this is where a lot of people struggle when it's time to give back to the Lord what's rightfully his. Amen? Listen, there's some of you right now going, get your hand out of my pocket. Listen, I ain't in your pocket. I'm just charged in Jesus' name to ask of you to give to the Lord. How many of you know that God is good? All the time? Listen, in Jesus' name, God is going to bless your seed that you sow into his kingdom. Amen? Amen. Take it away, sis. Dear Heavenly Father, we just uh, thank you for this day, dear Lord, and I just want to thank you and praise you that we are able to pass these offering plates again, God. I just, uh, I pray that you will be with all the ones that can give, and I just pray that you will pour blessings out over them, God, but I also pray that you will be with the ones that feel like they cannot, and I just pray that uh, you will touch them in a mighty way, and I just pray that you will bless them to where one day they can give. I just pray that you'll be with the rest of the service. Just bless us and forgive us where we have fa uh, fallen short. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Deep way down deep way down deep down in my heart deep way down deep way down deep down in my heart i got the love i've got the love of jesus i've got the love i've got the love of jesus i've got the love i've got the love of jesus and it's deep down in my heart we gotta move again. 
deep, way down deep, way down deep down in my heart. Deep, way down deep, way down deep down in my heart. I got the peace. I've got the peace of Jesus. I've got the peace. I've got the peace of Jesus. I've got the peace. I've got the peace of Jesus. And it's deep down in my heart. Deep, way down deep, way down deep down in my heart. Deep, way down deep, way down deep down in my heart. Y'all try to make us pass out up here. <laughs> All right, blessed be your name. And it's a high one, and we're out of breath, so y'all help us sing this morning. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, with streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. The walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Cause every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, blessed be the name of the Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun shining down on me. When the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Those pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise.
Our next one is Stand in Your Love, and Zachary's going to sing this one for us. Stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. She no longer has a place to. doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love.
All right, I do have a praise report this morning. As I look back there, I see Jean and Tammy back there. They have not been here since before COVID. Welcome back, guys. We have missed you all. We're so glad that you all are here with us this morning. And we're just going to pray, and we're going to claim that one day Jean will be back up here with us. Right, Jean? And also, I wish you all could be here, like, real early in the morning because PJ comes in early, and he has been singing all morning really loud, so I think we're going to have to recruit him for the praise team, too. He's not only going to be a deacon, but he can be up here singing with us, too. I wish you all could hear him. Uh, But our last song that we're going to do is called There Was Jesus, and no matter what you're going through, Jesus is right there with you all. Just remember that.
At this time, we would like to um, excuse all of our children. Praise God, the children's church. Amen. Let's give God praise. Look at all the kids. Hallelujah. All of our children. Praise God. Huh? The, all right. Brother, P, Brother PJ asked the age groups. Um, this big up there. And then this big down there. What is it? Kindergarten through K, K, K through through. Brother David, I know it's through. I'm, I'm just struggling right now. Brother David goes through. It's like that's helping me right now. All right, through, thir through three, three years old? Third grade. Listen, you all. Just third grade. I said this bitty. This bitty over there. This bitty up there. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all ready to have fun? Amen. Glory to God. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's good to know that we're not going to hell. It's good to know that it's not on our own works. It's what he did. Hallelujah. Say his name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There is, there is no greater name than that name right there. Hallelujah. Pastor just preached it on Sunday. Pastor said, when you ask God, listen, if you don't know how to ask, just say, Jesus. Can we do that together, Jesus? Jesus. Hallelujah. There's so much that Holy Spirit has for this worship service. You may have seen earlier that I've asked all of our leadership, deacons, our elders, all of them to be surrounded here. And they laid hands and they've blessed and anointed. I need you guys to know that whatever's in this box has been blessed and anointed by my beloved wife and I. Praise God. And um, the leaders prayed over it too. And we're going to get to that here in a minute. But what I ask of you is will you just allow God to just bless you in his presence? Now, some of you say, well, brother, that's kind of an obvious statement. We want, that's why we're here. We want to bless God and bless God's presence within, right? Say his name, Holy Spirit. But the reason why I'm asking you this quickly is because if we come into God's house consumed here, God give us all free will, Right? God is not a God that controls you. He's a good and perfect father. He's so merciful that he says, my child, I will spend as much time as you want with me, but it's up to you. Isn't that beautiful of our God? It, say it with me. It's up to you. Right? And that's the beauty. And see, everybody was confused about that. But say it with me, but Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ shows up, and guess what? Everything. Say it with me. Everything. That's more than everything. Now, everything changed, right? When God showed up in the flesh and he told everybody that thought they knew God, I come from heaven. He's my father. He is in me and I am in him. It's time to change your mind. The beauty of our Lord Jesus Christ is that that's what he started preaching in his ministry. He started reaching souls, children of God that would want a relationship with God, and he would tell them, you need to change your mind. Last time I checked, when Father God says change your mind, that means what you thought you knew, you choose not to know any longer. Right? And that's what I'm asking of you this morning. See, there's many of us. There's many of you that know the Bible better than I do. Well, Pastor, why are you preaching? I said yes to the Lord and God put me here. Amen? It doesn't matter as far as how many scriptures I know or memorize. What matters is how do we live our lives glorifying God Almighty? Being obedient in tithing, being obedient in offering, being obedient in going when God says go, right? Being obedient to crucify that, that flesh that wants to, right, discriminate, that wants to be prideful, that wants to judge other people, that wants to gossip, that wants to, right, to crucify that. And glory to God, Father's going to do that all in this service. Will you allow him? Amen. Amen. See, right now I can see the difference in the atmosphere in the room. I can see his light shining brighter and brighter. I'm not going to look at nobody. <laughs> I'm not going to look at nobody. <laughs> but there was some of you that was really dark coming in here. And remember, hallelujah, no more. Remember, remember God gives you free will. Right? But I'm not looking at nobody, but if that's you, will you, will you get out of your head? 
Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen? Amen? So let's bless God with the song we like to sing. Praise God. I'm offended. I'm offended that Tish would ask PJ and not me to be on the praise team. Anyways, I'll get over it because I'm going to sing a song anyway. If you're saved and you know it, clap your hands. If you're saved and you know it, clap your hands. If you're saved and you know it, then your face should surely show it. If you're saved and you know it, clap your hands. Hallelujah. You clapped your hands for the Lord. God knows where you're at. Amen. If you didn't clap your hands, guess what? That's between you and God. But guess what? The devil knows you didn't clap your hands. Everything has ears to hear, right? Let's get into this. Praise God. We're going to be in Matthew. We're going to stay in Matthew for quite some time. And the way this message goes, once again, don't try to expect where it's going. Just bless God. Just see God's glory only through Lord Jesus Christ. Just listen to Holy Spirit. Listen, I'm not the teacher. Nobody's the teacher. Only Holy Spirit's the teacher. Amen. Listen, I, I, I say this to you. I can't make you believe anything. I can't force you. I can't teach you nothing. I'm just a mouthpiece of God, and I beg you, look, look through me. You have the anointing. You have Jesus as Lord. Amen. So his power, his anointing is in you to look through me. And as you worship God in the scripture that we're going to go through, remember, in your church, in Holy Spirit's church, we always go to the written word of, of the Bible, the Holy Bible. We believe the Holy Bible from front to back. Amen. And as we get into the Word of God, it becomes alive. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit in us, it becomes alive. Now, what do I mean by this word being alive? This word that's alive changes your heart. He changes the way you think. He changes your attitude. You see, if, if you were, there's many of us now. There's many of us that we've done grown up in religion. We've done grown up in whatever way that we were brought up. And praise God for that because it all led you here. But my point that I'm making to you right now today is, is that you have to make the choice to say, Father God, I'm no longer going to live this life just in the dark. I want to live my life with purpose in what you paid for on that cross. And living this life of pur of pur pur chipper, chipper, chipper. purpose. Living this life of purpose means you aim to please God. I know that I'm surrounded by brothers and sisters. I like to say eagles, right? I'm surrounded by eagles. Where I know that I think I'm flying high, guess what? Oh, there's my brother. Man, I could, I could fly. I don't know if they do that, so don't judge me. All right? But what I'm saying is when you surround yourself with eagles, when you surround yourself with worshipers, that believe in Lord Jesus Christ, that are filled with God's Holy Spirit, the goodness of God is manifested in them. And you could hear it, and you could see it in the fruits of their life. Not to judge, but just to be in awe of God's glory. Amen? When we go back to the word glory, what does glory mean? God's view and opinion of you. What is God's view and opinion of you? There's no question. There's no question. You know why? Jesus. No matter what you're going through in this life, there's no question about how much God loves me because all I got to do is look at Jesus and I know exactly how much my God loves me. Amen? God is head over heels in love with you. Amen? There's some of you that need to hear this. Will you stop loving yourself more than God? You see, when you love yourself more than God, the devil starts to play games with your emotions, with your body, with your lustful, perverted desires. That's when you love yourself more than God. There needs to be a change, church, right? Remember, I'm not judging you. That's between you and the Lord. I can't judge. You know why I can't judge? I can't allow darkness into my heart. Amen. I love God first, and guess what? In Holy Spirit, say it with me, in Holy Spirit. Oh, my goodness, you love everybody. Glory to God, everybody. Oh, hallelujah. So we don't judge nobody. But, we, but I am here to tell you the truth. 
I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing. Amen. Let's get right into this. The Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. These are the religious crunchy people. They come together and they were tired of Lord Jesus Christ preaching this message of grace, of mercy. Guess what? Tired of preaching about Father and not God. How many, do you, how many of you do you know God as your Father? I won't be distracted by the crunchy people in this room. That's between you and the Lord. Listen, I'm happy. Oh, I'm so happy. I couldn't be happier right now. Amen. And I'm not going to let your crunchiness affect my happiness. Can I get an amen? So you can sit there and be crunchy or do you choose to be happy? Oh, hallelujah. How many of you like that deep song? I seen some of y'all, y'all were doing this. That's not being deep. Some of y'all going like that. That's not being deep. Some of y'all were just going like this. You had to put your hip into it. That's for next time. So the crunchiness tried to, tried to trap Lord Jesus Christ because they were done. They were done with all this. How dare you come in here and you start teaching us things that we don't know about God that we've been studying about. How many have been down that season trying to study the, the, the Holy Bible and get nowhere? Be honest with yourself, right? And then you find yourself, I'm just confessing, just getting more and more crunchy. And start judging people. Because they don't know what I know. You don't know Greek. You don't know Hebrew. You don't know the translations. You don't know as far as the platform of when this story was said and done. That ain't God. Right? That ain't God. And guess what? Lord Jesus Christ proved it when he showed up. Right? Lord Jesus called him, you brood of vipers. You put it before people that you worship God Almighty, but you set the standard so high that not only do you not do it, but you make it impossible for God's holy children to have a relationship. Brood of vipers. And say it with me, but God. Here's God in the flesh, right? Doing his thing. Amen. Amen. Doing his thing. You know what's so beautiful? I look at every one of you. Lord Jesus is doing his thing inside of you. Amen. There ain't no different. Lord Jesus Christ is doing his thing inside of you. Amen. So guess what? They try to trap him in his words. If you're a liar, stop lying. Well, brother, I just like to say things to make people feel good. Stop it. God knows that you're lying. And all that produces is bad fruit in your life and it opens yourself up to distractions of the enemy. Amen? Listen, I tell people all the time who tell me, oh, I'm going to see you at Sunday. Just stop. You know how embarrassing that is when I, when I do that? Sometimes in Walmart, you all know I go to Walmart a lot, and I have a good attitude about it. I have to speak life. I got in trouble, not just the other day. But, you know, I, I, I tell people, listen, don't tell me that because God knows what you're saying. Don't tell me you're going to see me because you've been telling me that for over a year now. Well, you just don't know my schedule. You're right, I don't know, but guess what? You could just say I love you. I'll talk to you later. But don't tell me that I'll see you in church Sunday. Because what you're doing is not only you're lying to me and you think that it doesn't hurt me, but guess what? I look for you. Right now as I sit here, there's over, I can't even count, over this many. Seriously, just this week. They told me, oh, I'm going to be there. I'm gonna, guess what? Not here. Let me ask you, are they doing the Lord's work? It hurts. So I'm begging you, just do what you say. Because see what these people try to do. When I say these people, these crunchy people, they try to trap Lord Jesus in his words. See, the devil wants to try to trap you in your words. If you're a continuous liar, if you have no integrity in your word, basically you just bump your gums, guess what? The devil pulls all that ammunition and he devises a plan. His plan is... I could see you speaking idle words. I could see you lying all the time. Darkness, go in. Say it with me, no more. They sent their disciples. There are disciples of Satan. 
And guess what? You worship God Almighty, you're covered by the blood, these disciples run away from you. But if you try to mask yourself as being a part of this world and a part Christian, I feel for your life. You're headed for such destruction and such a fall that, my goodness, I pray that you repent and get right with the Lord. I don't judge you, but I'm just saying, you cannot serve God and you cannot serve this world. Amen? You cannot claim to be a Christian. You cannot claim to be a child of light. Say it with me, light. Last time I checked, light is bright. But you cannot be a child of light and want darkness at the same time. You know what that is? Lukewarm. That's mixing hot and cold. And God says in his written word, if you're lukewarm, I will spew you out. Say it with me, I don't want to be spewed out. So they sent their disciples to, te to, to him along with Her Herodinus. And this is what they said. Listen to this. They said, teacher. Hmm. Is God really their teacher? No. They, we just covered that. They're disciples of the enemy. But yet the disciples of the enemy have the nerve to go up to the great teacher, the great I am, and go, teacher. They said, we know that you're a man of integrity, that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. You can kind of read and feel the sass behind that, right? Right? Tell us then, what's your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? Isn't that interesting? Lord Jesus Christ says, you hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. So they brought him the coin. Say it with me, show me the coin. Show me the coin. And this is what that coin looked like back in the day. And check this out. He said, whose image is this? Whose inscription? And they said, Caesar's. Then he said to him, so give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. Can I get an amen? Isn't our God so awesome? Whose picture is that on there? Genius. I mean, I know he's God Almighty, but my goodness, right? Slick. Just, just, you know, why are you coming at me like this, right? Whose picture is on there? <laughs> what does it say? Go give it back to him. Apparently he owns it. Right? Apparently that's his property. So go get, right? That, say it with me, that's his property. So go give it back to him. Right? Right? And he asked them, okay, so we already went through that, praise God. I love this because this is at my favorite store, Walmart. And we have a sister that wants to buy her stuff, right? But in order to redeem those things, right, there's a, there, there's a debt. Amen? And we know what has to be done in order to, to get to redeem that, right? The debt has to be paid. Isn't it beautiful that the, the simplicity of our salvation through God and how he paid the debt. And here we are living everyday life. And you actually have to pay for things. Say it with me, Jesus. Say it again, it's so sweet. Jesus. Hallelujah. That there's no denying it. I don't care what religion you are. Once again, I don't care what you believe because in his presence, he'll show you what to believe. Right? We're in a new season. I'm, I'm past that. I'm, we're done with that. Amen. We're in a season of harvest before we leave here in the next half an hour. Amen. How many believe that you're going to leave when that trumpet sounds? Amen. I know you believe it. Hallelujah. When that trumpet sounds, I pray that you are raptured out of here in Jesus' name. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you think this world is bad the way it is right now? You ain't seen nothing. You wait till we're all out of here and it's going to hit the fan, right? And it's a big fan, like that fan up there. Look at that. It looked like the claw from Toy Story. Oh, the claw. Miss Cassie, you all right? Okay, I just want to make sure. 
you, you, you kind of look like this. Okay. Okay, praise God. And I'm going to stay over here now. <laughs> After she answered, she went like this. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so the love of money, it does something to people, right? And we're going to get it. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to get into the word as far as about the love of money. But you can actually put anything in this sentence. But the love of something, it does this to a person. They're just in awe, right? In awe. Now, some of you don't look that goofy, right? I just wanted to find the best picture that shows someone just like, <gasps> right? <gasps> right? Anticipating. Awe. In awe, right? The love of money says this in Timothy 6.10. It says, is the root of all kinds of evil. The love of money. Now, you can also put family instead of money. You can also put career, the love of my career. What God is trying to emphasize and he's trying to direct right in us to make us put things in order in our personal relationship with the Lord is Father saying, is there something that is catching your eye other than me? The love of, right? It could be the love of social media. It could be the love of, I've got to get that diesel truck. Or what about the love of rims? I got the truck, now I need my rims. Huh? It could be the love of your wife. The love of your husband. Can I get an amen? Right? It could be the love of. But God keeps it simple and he says, the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, which some have strayed away from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through many sorrows. These sorrows that the enemy has lined up when we are pursued or attracted to something other than Christ, he will put, he will devise plots to try to trip you up. Meaning that if your love of money if you're greedy, if you have that love, that lust of money in you, it's never going to be enough. You could have millions in a bank, and guess what? It's never going to be enough. You know why? I just need it. I, 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 need, oh, I, need, I need to put it away. I need to put it away. I don't know if something's going to happen, and I need, a, I, I need to have a nest egg. And it starts to turn into fear. And it's the fear of this thing that the devil goes, I got you. I'm asking, if there's something going on in your life, it could be the love of money, it could be the love of a prayer request. Sometimes we put prayers above God. That we forget to worship God and all we do is just pray for that same thing over and over and over again. Most of us are grown up here, so let me just say this to you. You want to get busy? 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 You want to kiss me? You want to get busy? You want to get? You want to get busy? See, when we talk to God that way, when we just have prayer requests, prayer without just being thankful for who He is, it becomes an idol. Over the relationship that God paid for, for us to have in Holy Spirit. Can I get an amen? amen? Listen, God knows your heart and what you're believing for. For a breakthrough, for a family member, for a child. Right? Maybe you see things going on in your family that you know that's of the devil and I don't want it no more. Father knows that, but he asks you, will you open your heart up first with thanking him for what he did through Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Right? Will you open up your heart? Amen? Will you open up your heart and thank him? Right? I pray that this blesses you because there's many of us, all of us, me. I have so many prayer requests, not just for our church family and for, you know, the ministry in, in total, but for me personally. And if I'm not careful, I can just keep going to God in a one-way relationship, asking him for this and that and this and that. But guess what? All I'm doing is asking. I'm not seeking. Remember, it's, 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 it's a three-part, ask, seek, and knock. 
right? Are we seeking him? We live in a day and age right now that is all about the experience, right? It's about the wow factor. If there ain't no wow factor, oh, it's boring, I don't like it. Thumbs down, right? Every one of us were judges. My goodness, you go to YouTube, you don't like a video, you can just say thumbs down. You go to a restaurant, you don't like the food, you can go to their website, write a review, right? The tacos were not crunchy. <laughs> I pray you don't do that, <laughs> right? This world has conditioned us to be little judges, right? Oh, I've been in this line for five minutes. Can somebody open another line? Really? You ain't got five minutes? My point is, is that when we, when we put ourselves in this position where it's all about us and what we want and what we judge, be careful. Because last time I checked, God Almighty submitted himself to be the greatest servant for all of eternity. And he took upon being sin on that cross. He took all, all of our sin, past, present, and future, being God, and said, I'm going to go through this, even though they deserve it, I'm going to do it. And guess what? I'm going to give them what I deserve. Say it with me, eternal life. We love to say eternal family, amen? Eternal family. Praise God. So here's a, here's a disclaimer because I don't want nobody getting crunchy and I don't want to have another 15, 20 texts when I get home, all right, especially on a Sunday. Just, let's just chill. This next screen that you see is not the Bible. Say it with me. It's not the Bible. But this is from 1 Joey chapter 6, verse 10. And this is what it says. For the love of Lord Jesus Christ is the root of Holy Spirit for which some have stayed in faith in their faithfulness, and pierce the enemy through with many praises. Give God praise. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Where do you stand with the Lord today? If you were to take your last breath, if you were to take your last breath, would you see Lord Jesus Christ and Lord Jesus Christ? Listen, family. As my brothers and sisters, God Almighty planted us together to be rooted here together, to be covered by his blood. We're all family. Amen. We are family. Say it with me. We are family. Amen. Praise God. Listen, this is what I pray. That when we get raptured out of here and I see Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that Lord Jesus Christ goes, well done, my faithful servant. Amen. Well done. Right? Is that you this morning? Is that you? There's some of us sitting here in God's holy house going, I don't know, Pastor. I don't know. I've done this in my life. I've done that. I'm going to tell you, today's the day that God will wash you clean. And everything that you done did will be paid for through his holy blood in Jesus' name. Can I get an amen? amen. The difference between 1 Timothy 6.10 and 1 Joey 6.10 is First Timothy's talking about, that's what the devil wants to do. Take your love and apply it elsewhere, Brother Matt. Right? Right? This world wants to promote love. But here's something that a lot of people don't know. The devil loves. It got quiet up in her. The devil loves. What does he love? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. Right? Say it with me, but God. So I love it like we discussed earlier when you buy something at a store, can you just run through that beep, 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 put it in a bag and just walk out? You don't do that looking like this, I'll tell you that right now. They'll have Sarge there and, and faster than Superman you get there. Lock them up, throw away the key. Right? Say it with me, paid in full. And we know now that that's what Lord Jesus Christ did for us. Amen. Are you paid in full? Hallelujah. See, this awe factor, it should truly be like that, right? Right? 
Are you like that with God? Family, are you like that with God? Here's a question. Where does God stop in your life? When there's a problem with your spouse, is God no longer God in your life? When there's a problem with your grandchild, is God no longer God in your life? If your own child is struggling through sin that you know is from the pit of hell, is God no longer God in your life? I'm asking you this because how do we act? We know that he's God Almighty. We have Jesus as Lord. We have the resurrection power of Holy Spirit living on the inside. But my question to you that God wants to pry out of you is where is, where is he in these situations where God is no longer God in your life? I have a lot of brothers and sisters talk about being recovered from addiction. I tell 10 out of 10 of them, the focus is not being recovered. The focus is Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to be recovered. If you want to focus on being recovered, then guess what? You put that above God. And now you will struggle with addiction until you repent and get rid of that. Can you get an amen? amen. Say it with me. Past due. So Matthew 17, here, this is what, we're going to close up with this. When they had come to Capernaum, those who received the temple tax, here they go again. Here they go again, okay. They came to Peter and said, does your teacher not pay the temple tax? They went to Peter. Now I will tell you, I don't know many of you have thought about this. What does your character line up with? Who are you most likely like in the Bible, Brother David? Who are you most likely like? Right? Some say Jesus. Well, let's, let's remove Jesus out of the equation. If you were a disciple, right? Who would you be like? Would you be like Matthew? Would you be like Luke? John? You know? I used to say Peter. Right? I used to. But then honestly, my, the life I live is like Paul. Saul. Saul of Tarsus. And then he became Paul. Disciple of Holy Spirit. Amen? But you got to keep in mind, Peter is one of the first disciples, right, that Lord Jesus Christ recruited. And what was Peter doing? Fishing. It's not a trick question. I don't do that. It's okay to answer, right? I'm not going to say what kind of boat. Right? What kind of bait did he use? I'm not going to do you like that. Just feel, listen, be comfortable. We're not here to set anybody up. We're, we're just worshiping Lord Jesus. Amen? And he was just doing his business out there, right? And, he, and, and, and God recruited him. Now I want you to get this. Here is Peter just going about his business. And here are these crunchy people come and ask, don't your teacher pay temple tax? Basically what they're saying is, there's a payment due. Say it with me, there's a payment due. And check this out. This is what Peter said. He said, yes. He don't pay it. He don't. He's not lying. As a man, a woman, and God, remember the integrity of your word, right? I'm not going to cover up for my God. I'm going to tell you straight up. No, he doesn't. So he said yes. He agreed with their statement, right? So check this out. And when he had come into the house, Jesus anticipated him. You see, when you made your way to God's house this morning... God Almighty anticipated you. Amen. Kristen, God knew that your beautiful self would be seated right there, sis, with all of the anointing just flo flooding you. God knew he anticipated you. And I'm overwhelmed because I miss you. I love you. But God anticipated every one of you to be here and seated right there. And look at this. This is what Lord Jesus Christ said. To Peter, what do you think, Simon? Who, right? Who? That's kind of like me after we jumped up and down. Who? Can you imagine? Put yourself in Peter's shoes right now. You just had this conversation with those that want to trap my God, my Lord. And they make a statement that's the truth. And I say, yes, he don't pay. And I go into the room and Lord Jesus right there. With his eyes of mercy and grace, right? And he looks right at him. 
What do you think? Right now, Father God is asking, what's going on in your mind right now? Are you in this worship service to bless God and to be all in? Or is your mind wandering in all different places? God is saying, stop it. You have the power, church. You have the power to put this in check. His name is Lord Jesus, and you don't have to have thoughts that go everywhere and start thinking of evil things to do. That's the devil, and he's trying to whisper to you, right? We continue on the story. He said, this is what Lord Jesus had to say. For whom do kings of the earth take custom and taxes from? Their sons or from strangers? And then look at this answer. Peter said to him, from strangers. The taxes are collected from strangers. Say it with me, the debt. Say it with me, the past due. It applies to strangers, right? And check this out. Then this is what Lord Jesus said. Jesus said to him, then the sons, say it with me, then the sons and daughters are free. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus continues on to say this, nevertheless, nevertheless, lest we offend them, go to the sea. Oh, it's going to get gooder and gooder, family. Go to the sea. Cast in a hook and take the fish that comes up first. It gets gooder and gooder. And when you have opened its mouth, you will find a piece of money. Say it with me. Show me the coin. Take that and give it to them. And Lord Jesus Christ says, for me and you. At this point, Holy Spirit just wants to pause for a moment. Because I need you guys to be full aware as far as what this story is. We went through everything. But how it entails to our salvation. You see, we live in this fallen world that every soul is just charging up debt. Every one of us. We're charging up debt. And it gets to the point where one day there's going to be a collection. Are you hearing me, church? It's going to get to the point that one day real soon that God Almighty is going to ask for the payment. And the beauty of this message in how Lord Jesus Christ tells Peter, Bud, I want you to go out. You're going to go fishing. And you're going to take that first fish you catch. And you're going to open its mouth. And there inside the mouth is going to be a coin. First things first, do you have that kind of faith? All right, maybe y'all are more holy than I am. Because I'd be like, what? I honestly would. I'd be like, Lord, what, what do you, you want me to go fishing and get a, and go get the fish and open the mouth? <laughs> How many of you believe that God Almighty could make the coin appear anywhere? Right? See, we all know this, right? But look at the relationship that God has with his children. Because Peter listens to the Lord, looking at Lord Jesus. And he sees what God is telling him and he's like, you're all I have. <laughs> Lord Jesus, you're all I have. <laughs> that means when you tell me, if you tell me to go and get my fishing pole, and get my hook and go catch a fish and that you said that the promise is there I'm going to do it you know why because Peter was sold out that you are God and I will follow you how many of us right now as we sit here are you with that way with God right now truly is, is he all you have because if he's all you have then no matter what the reports are from the doctor no matter what your bank account looks like 
no matter how your child is living, no matter what problems you have, if he is truly all you have, you have trust in the Lord God and you will not waver from your faith. The beauty of this word is Peter goes and does exactly this. Can you imagine grabbing that fish? Let me turn around my fanny pack. My belt of truth. And digging, digging in the fish's mouth. I don't even think he needed to dig this hard in the fish's mouth. And then he pulled out a coin. Can I get an amen? I put that back in my belt, true. You see, the beauty of this message is that coin, hear me, family, that coin didn't just pay off. Lord Jesus is dead. Lord Jesus said, This is for me and you. So that past due amount was paid in full by Father God Almighty. And guess what? Father God Almighty redeemed that soul through that resurrection of Lord Jesus Christ. Say with me, I am redeemed. I am redeemed. And the question that I have for you, beloved family, is this you? Everybody on your feet for me, please. Praise God. Brother William, you can get the lights. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask all the leaders to come up. Husband, wives, all the leaders. Say it with me. Show me the coin. I'm glad you said that. This morning we want to do something special with you all. God wants to bless you with a coin. And on that coin, it's going to say, I am property of Lord Jesus Christ. And on the back, it just has God's hand ministry on there. And every one of these coins have been prayed for and blessed. And I'm going to ask every leader to grab a handful of coins. And I'm going to ask you guys to spread out the altar. But, you, but go ahead and grab the coins first. You just, everybody just come up together. This is my question and challenge to you, beloved church. I am all about in the business of making people uncomfortable. You know why? That's what the world has done to me all my life. And guess what? It's being uncomfortable in this world that I started to become a part of it. I've been in the gangs. I've started gangs. I've done all the most horrible things you can think of. I've been addicted to every drug you can think of for over 15 years. The devil tried his best to put me in the ground. Why? Because this world made me uncomfortable. And now I know, thank you to my Lord Jesus Christ, that I'm not part of this world. Just like you, I am part of the kingdom of heaven. And I'm going to ask every soul in here, if you want a coin, guess what? It's here for you for the taking. But you have to come up to one of the leaders and ask for prayer, and they're going to speak a prayer over you and give you this coin. You can leave here without a coin. That's between you and God. But if you want it, say it with me, I want it. If you want it, you will come up to whoever is available. And in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that because you choose to get uncomfortable with God, because you choose to step out of your comfort zone, because you choose to go to a leader of a church and just say, pray with me, that I believe that as you receive this coin, Holy Spirit deposits a fresh anointing in your life. Can I hear an amen? So without further ado, just come to the altar. Amen.